Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and after the success of my Ibanez 29 review video, it only makes sense to follow some of your suggestions and take a look at another brand. And the first request we had was ESP. Now ESP are a company that I also looked at last year, and what they offered last year left me extremely hopeful. Extremely hopeful, because they pushed the Evertune really hard, and I'm really interested to see how that's gone for them, what new models they introduce. Uh, uh, yeah, let's so let's take a look at it. So, ah, my face is here, fantastic. Right, so we are over here taking a look at ESP's 2019 offering. So just looking through here, it's always worth pointing out that when looking through something like this, Models can often be missing. There are things that aren't necessarily listed that may actually end up coming out. It was just pointed out to me by my friend Jeremy with Ibanez that there's actually two new AZ models that for some reason Ibanez didn't post in their new guitars thing. So, you know, there may be some other models here. And the, the other thing to mention with ESP is they're never entirely clear whether or not these are new and updated and this is the line now, or if these are additions to what the uh, what the company is offering. Uh, the reason I mention this is because there were some really interesting models last year. In particular, I was a big fan of the look of the uh, Eclipse eight string with an Evertune bridge. I thought that was great. And that's not listed here. It's still listed on the website, but whether or not you're gonna be able to buy one this coming year, you know, we're really gonna have to wait and see on that one. Uh, so I'm just going to look through these and let you know what I think. Now, there's a running theme when I look at a lot of this. You've got the uh, single pickup thing going on. Uh, and I'll be completely honest, you know, I'm really comparing this line to the Ibanez line because I did the Ibanez review video yesterday and I was blown away by how many new exciting signature models that they offered. So uh, when I look at this, I'm not I'm not really seeing I'm not seeing that at all to be completely honest with you. I'm seeing a Myers signature, I'm seeing a Steph signature like yeah, these are what you'd expect, right? Uh, anyway, so you know, Viper shape, EMG pickup in it. If you like the finish, then that's going to be cool for you, a black marble satin finish. No fret inlays, which yeah, fine. No tramp stamp is really what I'm getting at here. As long as there's no tramp stamp, I guess you do have my seal of approval. So, you know, simple guitar. Uh, again, it's very hard to comment on these without prices, without recommended retail prices or MSRPs or however you want to deal in those things. Because for, you know, seven, eight hundred bucks, that's a cool buy. Go and get one. For three thousand bucks, probably steer clear. <laughs> So the Steph Carpenter signature, yeah, it's got his signature fluence, um, Fishman fluence pickup in there. Sounds great by all accounts. I'm not crazy on the finish, uh, and yeah, an interesting choice to only have the one pickup. He has, has traditionally had two pickups in the guitar, but sort of both bridge pickups, or like a bridge and a middle pickup, with them placed very close together. Uh, so again, I would expect this to be quite a uh, an entry priced guitar. I wouldn't want this one to be too expensive. Now with the boiler off, let's continue. So a George Lynch signature. Oh, this one, this one always upsets me to be honest. Like, especially when you compare it to Ibanez, who when we were looking at all of their signature models, new signature models, I was having to go, oh cool, who's this guy? Oh cool, who's this guy? And I was finding out who all these guys are. And as a consequence of that, I've gone out of my way to listen to some new music today. Because you know, if guys are getting signature Ibanez guitars, they're probably worth listening to. George Lynch, I mean, what is this? Are we still in the eighties? George Lynch has not been relevant for a long, long time. Uh, I caught George Lynch playing at NAMM a few years ago and there was no one watching him. And that's a shame because, you know, George is a great player. But yeah, you know, I don't think having a George Lynch signature is that big a deal in 2019. I was going to say 2018. We're in 2019, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I always thought it was a goofy looking finish. Uh, never really been a fan of it. I think there are, there are better Tiger Stripe um, guitars out there. So yeah, not for me. No, thank you. Um, a Frank Bellow bass, yep, yeah, cool. Uh, I, th I believe I had a quick glance at this, yeah, a new and more affordable version of the signature model for Anthrax bass player Frank Bellow. Mahogany body, maple neck, yeah, you get the idea. Uh, cool. Now, the Ken Susie model. I like this guitar, in fact, I really like this guitar, 
because it comes with that Evertune bridge. So you, if you watched my video last year, you know I was really excited about the sheer amount of Evertune guitars that uh, ESP were releasing. Uh, in particular, they were releasing an Andy James signature model with the Evertune bridge in there, a six string and a seven string version. And then that ended up never actually coming out because Andy left ESP for Kiesel, uh, you know, a couple of weeks after that guitar got announced, which, uh, you know, definitely uh, an interesting bit of drama that. But yeah, so that was one less Evertune. Now, as I say, huge, huge Evertune fan. I have um, I have a couple of Evertunes, and uh, you know, there's a there's a, a a partnership offer on the table from those guys. But to be honest, you know, I've got my Evertune guitars. I don't need more of them. Uh, but I am a big advocate of the product. I love the product. They don't pay me in any way, shape, or form. I just genuinely really like the Evertune bridge, and I recommend it to a lot of people. So seeing something like this is quite cool. I like the metallic silver finish on this with the Evertune bridge, cool. Reverse headstock, cool. You know, scratch plate, kind of cool. And the Fisherman Fluence pickups, which are very popular in these last couple of years. So yeah, cool to see that. Very cool to see that. Continue on, the Gary Holt signature. I mean, yeah, it's not a bad looking, I was gonna say Les Paul, but I guess it's an Eclipse. It's not a bad looking Eclipse, right? The white finish, red binding, red pickups, red binding around the fretboard. Yeah, I can I can kind of see the appeal from that. It's like an angry buckethead signature, right? <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, I, I mean, that one grows on me the more and more I look at it. The only thing that puts me off, of course, is the tremolo, because uh, I'm not a trem user. But yeah, Bill Kelleher signature, the Sparrowhawk, absolutely disgusting guitar for an absolutely incredible guitar player. Um, or playing in one of the best metal bands on the planet. So, um, yeah, Bill, sort it out, buddy. <laughs> you can do better than this. Uh, having said that, you know, it is nice to have a signature guitar that doesn't just look like all of the other signature guitars that everyone has. You know, a, a Viper, um, a Horizon. I'm not sure what they call that shape, the traditional Strat shape. Uh, you know, uh, an Eclipse, like... This is, I guess, something a little bit different, so it's nice to stand out. Anyway, so new and updated ESP USA series. First introduced in 2014, the ESP USA series is comprised of guitars we built at our manufacturing facility in Southern California. We've continued to add the ESP USA add to the ESP USA series, which is now made up of 19 different guitar models. Seven new ESP USA guitars have been added for this year. And like other ESP USA models, each of them can be personalized to your specifications with a wide variety of finish and component choices, which is always a nice touch, you know? Looking at the Ibanez guitars yesterday, I didn't make enough of a point of the, uh, the fact that they have a 27 inch scale seven string guitar, which totally appeals to me. I, I think that's what you want for a seven string guitar. Um, but the beautiful one with the beautiful finish had a tremolo on it, and I don't want the tremolo. I want a fixed bridge. Uh, there is a fixed bridge mod, big, like fixed bridge model, but unfortunately that only comes in a natural wood finish, which again I despise. So that's I I can't buy the guitar. Like there's no way I can buy that and be happy. So you know to have options like this, different finish options, different component choices. Bravo ESP, bravo. So ESP USA Horizon Two offers. Uh, uh, set through construction, 25.5 scale, mahogany body, three piece maple neck, ebony fingerboard, uh, tone pro locking TOM bridge with a string through body, spurs or locking tuners, your choice of EMG or Seymour Duncan pickups. Yeah, three new M series, etc. etc. So just looking through this, um, you know, I'm not crazy on this wild berry fade at all. I also kind of think that this might look a bit nicer with black hardware. Um, or at least something darker, not necessarily black. Uh, just, you know, you've got the black pickup rings, like it, it just looks odd to me that you've got this very bright hardware around this. Um, and also just looking up here, just the image of this, this looks like, uh, this is a big bug for me. I really, this really annoys me. I could be totally wrong on this, but I suspect that I'm not because all of these machine heads are exactly the same angle. Uh, but you know, this is such an obvious Photoshop of a mock-up of what the guitar will look like. Um, so not crazy on that. Uh, here we go, look, another <laughs> another cool Photoshop. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but these all look like mock-ups to me. They don't look quite right. Uh, yeah, it doesn't appeal, again, of course. Single pickup, I can I can see the, the, the appeal of that. I'm not crazy on the finish. Um, 
tremolo on it and that volume knob is right in the way I could never use that that's um, offensive that positioning <laughs> uh, again look single pickup uh, EMG in the bridge disgusting chromed uh, hardware no thank you I guess the quilt on this is a lot better than the flame on this but yeah still a bit in your face again look at this another single pickup <laughs> so obviously a mock-up image um, yeah, they, ju they just look kind of wrong. If you remember the Variac 700s, the Line 6 guitars that didn't have pickups in them, when people looked at those, the issue that they had is well, it doesn't look like a guitar. And to me, this, there's something about this just looks a little bit wrong. Uh, having said that, I have always been a fan of white guitars. Uh, I love Michael Romeo's signature guitar. I had one for quite a while and then um, then traded it in order to get something and I regret that trade all the time. Although I love the guitar that I got in exchange for it, it would just be nice to have my uh, Michael Romeo guitar back. So big, big fan, fan of white guitars. Um, yeah, I just think that... I mean, there's really two things. Pickup missing and then that uh, pickup selector is too close to that pickup. It would really get in the way for me. Um, yeah, now moving on to the Viper, uh, sorry, not Viper, what do they call this, King V? V2, okay, yeah, it's not King V, is it? <laughs> A V2, um, yeah, cool. I've always liked this kind of more subtle cutaway that you get, it's a V, but it's also got that cutaway, uh, which is nice, and then the like the non-symmetrical V nature of it kind of helps it balance a little bit. I was never a fan of uh, Flying V guitars, no one, one as a prize in a competition I had a Gibson and uh, as soon as I played it st especially standing up I just went wow okay yeah I see the appeal of these these are quite cool so uh, yeah this one looks a lot less like a mock-up than, than these up here um, yeah I guess if that's up your street then that's up your street same kind of thing a little bit more a little bit more flamboyant it's nice that you've got these different tones of wood on there uh, but pff, yeah probably not for me uh, garish, offensive to the eyes, gold and purple. The thing with ESP is they're a great company, at least in my mind, if you're a heavy metal guy, like ESP are one of the go-to companies, right? They make great metal guitars. Um, I don't know how popular they are outside of that sort of scene, and this really has that kind of, we're trying to do something new, we're trying to appeal to, an, to a market that we don't have. Uh, of course, you know, what am I talking about though? Maybe you love that guitar, it's just not for me. So a new and updated ESP E2 series, you all know this by now, the E2 series are high quality guitars and basses built in uh, the ESP factory. Now, interesting they don't specify which ESP factory. For 2019, we'll start by telling you about several new versions and the exciting arrow shape. We're debuting a non-tremolo version of the guitar with the E2 Arrow NT. Hopefully that NT means no tremolo. <laughs> which offers a Goto TOM bridge and a string through body. It features neck through body construction and an older body and a three piece maple neck with an ebony fingerboard comes in black, snow white, black, silver fade finishes. The snow white and black silver fade finishes are also being added to the standard E2 Arrow, which offers a Floyd Rose original bridge. All E2 Arrow models include EMG 81 and 85s and Goto locking tuners. So yeah, good value guitars, right? Uh, and th this is that arrow shape. And if you just compare that to this, so look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Yeah, I can see the appeal of the arrow. You know, your leg is going to sit in there, and it's going to be quite a comfortable uh, position if you're sitting classical. Um, yeah, but it strikes me as an imp certainly an improvement on the uh, on the original V that they do. These kind of offset shark fins. Something about those bug that bugs me. They sort of tilt as they go along. Um, not crazy on that. Yeah, Snow White. If this had black binding on it, cool. Another thing that I guess I should mention that I'm never crazy on on guitars is beveled edges. I like a you know a flat top on a guitar. I don't like arched tops, and these bevels. Uh, yeah, just not crazy on that. If you look at just about every single one of my guitars, none of them have an arm contour or anything like that. I like, I'm a telly guy, I'm a Telecaster player, so I like just a slab of wood under my arm, uh, and th therein would be the problem with this. Like, I look at a white guitar and I think, put some black binding on it maybe or something, and it's going to look great, but with these beveled edges, that probably wouldn't work. Um, yeah, fair enough. And there's that fade, and then the same thing with a tremolo, and then the fade with a tremolo, cool. 
Right, now, here's where things are interesting. The E2 Eclipse 7 Evertune is a seven-string guitar in the popular single, single cutaway Eclipse shape that includes the innovative Evertune constant tension bridge system available in black satin finish. The guitar includes a set through construction, mahogany body of a maple cap, Seymour Duncan Sentient and Pegasus pickup set with push and pull coil splitting. Now, yeah, no mention of uh, the set of the eight string. Now, the reason I love the uh, Evertune, I'll bring my face up for this. I did some videos on this. The reason I love the Evertune is because my issue with seven strings and eight strings has always been getting the balance of string gauge versus tone, right? So if you have a thin string on uh, on a seven string, tuned down to B or even lower, the lower you tune with a lighter string, the looser the string will be. And when you hit that string, it, it goes out of tune. There's no kind of goes out of tune. It will go sharp and kind of return to pitch. Cool, how do you solve that problem? Well, you beef up your string gauge to increase your tension. So you increase your tension. Instead of having your lighter string, you put something super heavy on there. The heavier your string gets, the more it impacts the tone of that string. Uh, deep subject, we talk about string in harmonicity and things like that. But essentially, when a string gets too thick, it stops vibrating like a string and starts vibrating like a cylinder. Uh, and this can cause problems with harmonics and overtones on the, on the string. It's a very complicated subject. Point is, the Evertune removes all of that. So when we look at this guitar again, because it's got that Evertune bridge on there, you can have essentially whatever string gauge you like on those, and you can set your Evertune in a way that when you hit the string, it will not go sharp. So you can achieve that lovely, constant, aggressive, in-tune sound, being able to hit the strings as hard as you want, but also go for the tone you want. Because the more and more I experiment with extended range, the more and more I find that I do like the tone of a thinner string, a little bit more snap and attack. So yeah, the Evertune solves that, uh, which is why I never really worry about scale length either when I'm looking at a, a seven string or an eight string. If there's an Evertune, none of that matters. So yeah, it's cool that they've got it. It would be great if the eight string was still available and I hope that they still make that eight string because uh, that's a great way into the market of an Ever Evertune eight. It's probably it's the best, if not the only option on the market. So ESP, please don't let me down on that one. <laughs> Uh, they've also got this natural blue fade that they've introduced. Yeah, again, not crazy on that. Snow white satin. Yeah, um, not the worst. Not the worst. The, not the greatest picture, though, because you've got all this shadowing effect on there that I assume is coming from some sort of arched top. But then the headstock looks incredibly clean with no shadows whatsoever. Uh, and then you've got that contrast of the very black logos and things on there versus the yeah it doesn't look quite right but yeah i think that's more of a t photography thing so three new esp e2 horizon models have been announced for 2019 these include the e2 horizon 3 fr meaning floyd rose i assume available in black cherry fade finish it's a neck through body design with our floyd rose Original bridge, a set of Seymour Duncan SH two ends and custom five pickups. The E two Horizon FR comes in black natural burst finish and also includes a Floyd Rose along with a Seymour Duncan Sentient and Pegasus set. E two Horizon N two two sorry NT two comes in a Tiger Eye Amber Fade finish and includes an EMG sixty six TW and a fifty seven TW splittable pickup set. All three of the E2 Horizon models have figured maple tops with coil splitting controls. So cool. Yeah, never crazy on the, uh, again, like the arch top of that. The, uh, yeah, not, not for me. Having said that, when I look at this, the Horizon, the classic Horizon, uh, Brettgar said, the ESP signature Brettgar said, it's an old guitar. I've always, always wanted one. In fact, there was one on eBay just recently and I was looking and it was like, I can totally afford it and I should buy it, but I'm also learning how to be an adult and not just make so many stupid impulse purchases to buy a guitar that I probably won't play, but I'm buying it just because I want it. Um, I would still love one of those. So if someone in the UK has one and they want to sell it to me for a reasonable price, uh, get in touch because I love that guitar. Um, that's what I look think of when I see this uh, model. Uh, though the Brett Glass Head one has the kind of the dolphin tail headstock on it, which uh, yeah, great. So I do have a, an affinity to that horizon shape. Not crazy on the finish, but you know, you don't care about my opinions on finishes, right? <laughs> So this is much cooler though. So based on your request, we've added bare knuckle pickups to several new E2 models. So I'm just gonna go on record and say bare knuckles, my favorite pickups on the face of the earth. Um, I have bare knuckles in that, 
that, that, and th that. <laughs> uh, what have we got? Juggernauts. Um, oh, also my headless that's down here somewhere. How do I do that? Point like that. Um, yeah, bare knuckles in that. So Juggernauts in that. I have the um, Blackhawks in that. I have a, a Cold Sweat and uh, Nail Bomb in that. I have Aftermaths in that. And I also have the uh, Blackhawks in my headless. So I'm a huge, huge fan of Miners. Uh, sorry, well, I'm a huge fan of Miners. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of bare knuckle pickups. Uh, so great to see that they are offering them. My favorite set are the Blackhawks. I absolutely love the Blackhawks. I want them in every single one of my guitars. So good on you, ESP, for offering some uh, bare knuckles. Now, uh, do you specify which ones though? So Buckeye Bell Maple Top, Natural Fade Finish, includes Hip Shop Bridge, Bare Knuckle Aftermath, Tiger Pickups. Yep, a seven string version, etc. So yeah, that's, I don't, oh, I really don't know how I feel about the finish on it. I really don't know how I feel about the finish on it. Um, but it's, it's totally a guitar that's up my street. Fixed Bridge, two pickups, yeah. Ben Uncle pickups. <laughs> um, yeah, Ebony, Ebony board. Yeah. Seven string. Really don't like that finish, I can tell you that for nothing. <laughs> and then we've got a Viper. Yeah. I loved the Viper growing up, but not so much now. And of course the Urban Camo. Can't I can't have an ESP Viper without that Urban Camo option, can you? An updated LTD Deluxe series. For many years, the LTD Deluxe 1000 series guitars have long been among ESP's most popular and best-selling models due to a combination of professional quality designs and components along with appealing affordable pricing for instruments of their calibre. Here's what's new for the 2019 range. So they've got an Arrow series in there. Yeah, single pickup, Floyd Rose. That's not a bad looking guitar. That is not a bad looking guitar. Um, and I never thought I'd say this, but my only criticism of that guitar is that I can't really see ESP or LTD on there. Um, and now, now I look at it on the uh, Viper Seven String. That I don't, I don't suppose I can zoom in on that. No, I can't zoom in on that. Um, that logo looks quite gaudy. Um, I wish that that was in maybe in silver or something. Um, yeah, not a fan of that logo. Uh, but yeah, that is that is a beauty. I don't mind that at all. Uh, what silver burst? It's cheap looking silver burst. I don't like this, you know, heavy black up here. Yeah, more. I'm not even gonna bother clicking that. Yeah, honey burst. Ooh, hello. That's a nice finish. Yeah, again, Floyd Rose. So no, thank you. Um, cherry fade. Yeah, there's a, the thing with a fade like this is you get the extremes, right? At this end, I don't like this. At this end, I don't like this. And as you go down, it's like don't like it. Oh, I'm starting to like it. Oh, I really like this. It's nice. Um, it's getting a bit pale. Uh, so that's too pale. Oh no, disgusting. Yeah, no. Right in the bin. <laughs> Same principle here. Now this is the interesting one, uh, the multi-scale. Let's see what they talk about this. So the ESP um, LTD M1000 multi-scale is our first six-string model with angled frets and multiple scale lengths. Joining the M1007 M1008 multi-scale models, the M1000 multi-scale offers a 26 to 25.5 scale, which is not a bad um, variation there, allowing for longer scale lengths and better string tension in the lower registers. This guitar offers a lightweight mahogany body with a solid flame maple drop top, uh, satin nat uh, natural satin finish, and a five-piece maple and purple heart neck. Other features include the black bone nut, hip shot bridge with string through body, and a set of Seymour Duncan, Sentian, and Nazgul pickups. Um, cool. So you know what? Hats off to ESP for this, because at no point in this do they sit here and try and tell you that the reason they've done this is for comfort of playing. And when you compare this to the Ibanez, you'll see exactly what I was talking about with the Ibanez. So I said I don't like the Ibanez multi-scales because they put their parallel fret at the 12th fret, whereas the ESPs have got their parallel fret here at the 5th fret. And what that means is when you look at that first fret, this is angled, but it's nowhere near as extreme an angle as you get on the Ibanez. Um, but as you go up the neck, this fanning becomes a lot more extreme towards this end. To me, that kind of 5th to 7th fret area is the ideal place to put a fan, uh, put your, your parallel fret. I would probably go for the 7th fret, uh, but Ibanez's putting it at the 12th fret is just a no-no for me. It's not the, the best place to put it. Um, yeah, not a fan of that. So I, I don't like the natural satin finish. I hope that you can get another option on this because really, you know, this is getting into um, like Ormsby 
territory in terms of appeal and i assume this probably is probably going to be a bit cheaper so um yeah cool good option good option having said that i can't ever really see a time where i'd want a multi-scale six string so yeah oh yeah and ps purple sparkle <laughs> that reminds me of that old g3 parody video and then bases uh, i don't care about bass players because um yeah Base players are useless, useless cunts. So, <laughs> I kid, I kid. I've, I'm just very aware that I've been going for quite a while. Nice looking acoustic, nice looking acoustic, nice looking acoustic. But I don't care about these because I'm not a virgin. Um, right, and now we get into the cheap uh, LTD lines, I assume. Yeah. Uh, LTD Viper, tw oh no, sorry, Baritone. 27 scale Baritone version of the Viper in an affordable yet powerful 400 series version. Yeah, so baritones, I love baritone scale lengths. I love, love, love baritone scale lengths. I was talking about it with the seven string, like I want a 27 inch um, baritone scale seven string. Uh, baritone scale six, yeah, cool. I guess if, you got, if you're tuning down to B, I just look at it, I'm like, cool, you got it tuned down to B. Um, wouldn't it be nice if you had an extra high string on it <laughs> and make it a seven string? Um, yeah. Having said that, you know, if you've ever, if you've not experimented with a baritone guitar, give them a go. They're incredible. Uh, I found that when I first played a baritone, I, my thought was, wow, if I ever need to record a song that's on the seventh string, I'm going to record all the riffs on a baritone because they feel and sound better because of the tension of the strings. Uh, yeah, so cool. And a 400 series Black Satin, uh, sorry, Alien Grey and Snow White Viper. So that's it. Um, not a bad offering, not a bad offering. I guess I have to do the same thing that I do with Ibanez, which is give you my favorite. I have to tell you which one is my favorite of all of these guitars. And this is a tough one. There's two that I've got in mind, I think. Two that I've got in mind. I'm just scrolling through them again. Oh, it's a real, real tough one. So, I'm going to lean towards the E2, the M2 NT, with the bare knuckle pickups and the fixed bridge. Um, it's a toss up between that and where is she? Yeah, the Ken Susie model. And actually, when I look at that, I would probably pick that because of the Evertune bridge and the Fishman pickups. And it's nice to have those Fishman pickups versus the. Well, I'm, I prefer the bare knuckles, but it, yeah. Yeah, they're both great sets of pickups, but this one's got, oh, it's, oh I'm really torn on this one. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Ken Susie, actually, just because the, the finish on that doesn't offend me in the slightest, whereas I'm, I'm not crazy on the finish on the other one, but it's, a, it's close. That is a close one. Uh, but there you go, guys. What do you think? What do you think of ESP's new line of guitars this year? Uh, which one is your favourite? Which one do you like? Which one do you not like? Which one could you see yourself buying? What would you like to see that they're not offering? Let me know in that comment section below. Lastly, I just want to say a huge thanks to these people over here. These are my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys rule. Uh, you bring videos like this to the masses. So thank you very much for your support. If you would like to check me out on Patreon, you can do so for as little as one dollar. Uno dollar. See, I speak different languages. <laughs> Click here to check me out on Patreon. Subscribe by clicking this button down here. Two more of my videos here and here. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. Chat to you in the comment section below, and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.